Hey Cal fans and welcome to California Golden Blogs where it's always more fun when the Bears are winning. Today we're going to look at our run game against the Beavers and specifically at the versatility that Malik McMorris brings us as a lead blocker. Obviously when McMorris is in the game there's a good chance that we're running the ball and so what I want to look at today is how Bo Baldwin keeps our run game unpredictable even when we're using the same personnel packages. Now a lot of you are probably used to thinking about numbers in the box, but what I'm going to show today is that the box is too big a category to think about when you're talking about the run game. It's much more important to count the numbers at the point of attack, and that's a very different thing from how many defenders are in the box. On this play, for example, we see that Cal has five offensive linemen and a fullback for six blockers in the box, and Oregon State has seven defenders, so they should be able to outnumber us and stop the run. If we look closer though, we see that Oregon State's not equally strong at every part of the formation. To the wide side of the field, they've got four defenders, and that definitely outnumbers our right guard and right tackle, but to the left of the formation, they only have three defenders, which means that they're outnumbered by our left guard, left tackle, and the fullback. On this play, we're running power with our guard pulling to the left, and that's going to let the fullback, left tackle, left guard, and pulling guard account for these four defenders, and Oregon State's not going to have anyone else in position to cross the formation and make the tackle. On the last play, we saw that Oregon State was outnumbered to the fullback side of the formation, but on this play, we're going to see something different. On this play, they're stunting this defensive tackle across the formation toward the fullback, which is going to give him better numbers to stop any play to that side. That won't be a problem for us on this play, however, because unlike last time, the fullback's now crossing to the weak side of the formation. That means that when this defensive tackle goes away, we're going to be left with a left guard, left tackle, and fullback to block these three defenders and open up a nice cutback lane for Laird. On this play, we're not able to get the same numbers advantage that we saw in the last two plays, but we are able to use our fullback to create a good matchup for our running back. Before the snap, we have four blockers to the left of center, with a left guard, left tackle, tight end, and fullback, but it looks like Oregon State can get as many as six defenders to that side of the play, letting them radically outnumber us. The right side of the formation isn't much better, where we only have the right guard and right tackle against three or four Oregon State defenders who can get to that side. But once again, it's not just about numbers in the box, or even numbers to a side, it's about numbers at the point of attack. And what we see here is that Oregon State's cornerback is lined up way outside, he's almost at the bottom of the numbers. And so when Cal runs an inside zone play, there's no way that he's going to be able to fall inside and make the tackle before the running back gets a major gain. On the very next play, we can see that Oregon State's adjusted to try and take away this weakness. Remember that on the last play, their cornerback was lined up basically at the bottom of the numbers. Well, here, we can see that he's been pulled much more inside, and this gives him a more downhill angle at the running back to take away plays like the one that we just saw. The problem for the Beavers is that we're not running the same play here. We're now attacking that cornerback, and we're releasing Malik McMorris up to seal him off inside and gain the edge for Laird to get the 10-yard gain. From these plays, therefore, we can see that Baldwin schemed up a really nice game plan on the ground. We've seen four different plays, all out of two back sets, but using four different blocking schemes that allowed us to attack different parts of Oregon State's front. This kept them from being able to key on any one part of the front when we were in these formations, and allowed us to stay unpredictable, getting Laird over 200 yards. Hopefully, with this extra week to prepare, he'll be able to do the same thing to help us get bull eligible, beat Stanford, and get the axe back. Go Bears!